Hi, welcome to your astrology forecast for the weekend of April 18th to April 20th, 2014. So on April 18th, the moon in Sagittarius squares Neptune in Pisces. The moon in Sagittarius is helping us to expand upon our emotions, expand upon ourselves from within, expand beyond any subconscious limitations and helping us to really hone in on our subconscious mind and overcome any blocks in regards to things that we have subconsciously been holding on to and uh, helping us to expand beyond subconscious emotions. Squaring Neptune in Pisces here, Neptune in Pisces is bringing up the unconscious aspect of these things, the unconscious things that are, uh, the, and it, you know, it could be, help, or intuition is helping us to unlock through our unconscious mind the access to our subconscious mind. So we're working with our higher mind and using what we know to really come into understanding of our subconscious processes and using what uh, intuitive insights we are getting to really understand what has been blocking us in terms of expanding and in terms of being in tune with the universe or in tune with spirit or whatever you want to call it, your intuition, being in, you know, in tune, being, uh, you know, in alignment with your soul. And yeah, I mean, it's at first it may bring up some uh, button pushing, some tensions, some, uh, you know, darker aspects of ourselves, some things that, you know, that are a little intense at first. But as we keep unlocking these things, keep on uh, clearing away these subconscious things, uh, we can expand and grow and be in tune with our intuition. Venus in Pisces sextiles Pluto and Capricorn. Oh, this is so <laughs> funny. All right, um, Venus in Pisces is really um, helping us to be in tune with our relationships and really connect in our relationships in a very intuitive manner, in a very unconscious manner, in a very um, feeling-oriented way, in a very sensitive way, a very connected way, a very uh, unified way. And with it sextiling Pluto and Capricorn, these unconscious things are coming up, these subconscious things are coming up, and it's helping us to transform them. It's helping us to become aware of these things, especially in our relationships, but also not only in our relationships, but in what we want to do in the world and our ambitions in our careers and in, um, you know, what, what we want to bring to the world. And so in, I mean, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of bringing both of those aspects into play. Maybe through our relationships, it's helping us to transform what we want to do in the world and what, you know, what our uh, true purpose is, our true, uh, what would bring the uh, most transformation to our world, the most truth and alignment with our soul to the world, the soul, you know, truth. And of course, uh, this can be you know, a difficult thing if you're very attached to your job or if you're very attached to maybe just subconscious ambitions that you've had that, you know, you've been attached to or that you've been, um, you know, wanting to do that weren't always in alignment with your soul. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's very transformational and very, it, it will, you know, push some buttons, but Ultimately, it's to become aware of these buttons or these triggers that, um, these subconscious triggers that need to be transformed. All right, and then the sun conjuncts the south node in Aries and opposes the north node in Libra. Okay, <laughs> so um, the sun conjunct the south node in Aries is having us 
really, um, we're sort of being, you know, we're being in a mode that has come most naturally to us. Um, this will bring up some of our ego tendencies that need to be let go of. And what it's challenging us to do is to try to come into alignment with harmony and peace and help us to look at other points of view and to be open to other points of view, to be more open-minded and to kind of um, look at not only our own selves, but to try to understand where other people are coming from and try to um, bring more justice, bring more fairness. But it is a challenge and we will be um, very tempted to just uh, be in our old ways of being, in our old ways of being, you know, how we've been for, you know, however long we've, you know, whatever has been most natural for us to be. And so um, it is a challenge to kind of try to bring a new point of view into play. Then the moon in Sagittarius trines Uranus and Aries. Now this is just like bringing insights, so many insights, bringing a lot of uh, change and shaking up our beliefs and shaking up our emotions, bringing more insights into our emotions, into ourselves, into our subconscious processes, into our beliefs, into our uh, higher learning, into our higher mind and really connecting to our higher mind, connecting to our higher selves, connecting to our higher purpose, connecting to, you know, the higher energies. These insights are coming in. They're going to shake up our world. They're going to shake up our beliefs and our beliefs are going to be, you know, the ones that are not serving us, the ones that are not true, the ones that are not in line with our soul are going to be falling away. These things are going to just, you know, disappear. And uh, it'll be good and you'll feel freer. Once you let go of those things that are, you know, not true for you, then you're going to feel free. You're gonna feel a freedom in that. You're gonna feel expanded and emo emotionally uh, in line with your purpose. And then the moon in Sagittarius scores Venus in Pisces. All right. <laughs> so this is definitely bringing up some uh, emotions and, uh, you know, it, uh, regarding our relationships, anything that is, uh, like unconscious in our relationships are going to be brought up in any unconscious beliefs or subconscious beliefs and any, uh, things that are, uh, limiting us are going to be expanded beyond anything. I mean, there's going to be like a complete dissolving of anything that holds us back, a complete uh, awareness of the, like, the, the darkness and the unconscious feelings. There's going to be some awareness brought to these things and to our uh, beliefs that bring those things that are unconscious into our relationships, the things that are really related to what we believe love is, the things that we believe relationships are, the things that are not exactly in alignment or ex, you know that expansive so it could bring up some tensions in relationships it could bring up uh buttons being pushed and uh you know it's willing you to expand beyond the things that you have believed about these things so that you can be free of those things to be expanded emotionally to be in tune with your love, in tune with the love, in tune with relationships, in tune, just in tune in general. <laughs> just letting things dissolve away and uh, allowing you to expand. All right. And then the moon in Sagittarius, sextiles, Mars, and Libra. So this gives a boost of energy, a boost of energy to our relationships and an ability to expand, ability to... Uh, have a lot of energy and to maybe even uh, have debates about beliefs and philosophical ideas and learning and it should be very intellectually stimulating as well as spiritually stimulating and it is of course important to exercise <laughs> 
And uh, it would be fun to do too. It'd be fun to do something somewhat competitive and to do something energetic and um, joyous and be able, it'll help you expand to do these things. It'll help you to grow within your relationships and to have more of an, a, an understanding even uh, between you and a partner and to like kind of have more playfulness too. The moon is Sagittarius, squares Chiron, and Pisces. So <laughs> then, you know, this is bringing up some of the old wounds related to subconscious beliefs and unconscious feelings. And, you know, it's bringing up that stuff and this stuff's going to be healing and it's going to, you're going to be able to expand and dissolve and really move past those old feelings, those hurts those maybe those reasons why you even have those beliefs about relationships these things are really you know coming up these things are really coming up these things that you know have held us back these things that you know were true for us at one point but are no, no longer going to be true for us anymore because we need to let those things go we need to heal those things and you know it's possible that the purpose of you feeling those things was to help others heal those things because in going through that pain you were able to experience that pain and then once you have that pain within you you're able to heal it you're able to heal yourself and by doing that you're helping to bring healing to others and you can help to uh share that experience so that others have hope so they have hope for healing they can heal because of this and it's important to heal yourself and to let those things go and not to contribute um, to the pain, not allow the pain to be the ruler, but to harness the pain and like just understand it and let it be there and like heal it and, and go in it, go in it a little bit, go into it and, and, and be able to expand beyond it, beyond it. Whew. Intense day, intense day. <laughs> All right. On April 19th, the moon in Sagittarius trines Mercury in Aries. Moon in Sagittarius. Terius. Did I say Sagittarius? <laughs> Sagittarius. All right. Um, so this is helping us to have our mind and our emotions on board with each other and help us to actually uh, utilize both our emotional and mental energy to go it forward, to go forth in the pursuit of what we want, the pursuit of our dreams, the pursuit of the expansion of ourselves, the uh, pursuit of expanding our world and um, becoming aware of ourselves and, and uh, expanding our horizons and gaining abundance even. And of course, with these fiery energies, you do want to watch out for impulsiveness in doing that. And you don't want to be too pushy, of course. <laughs> and it's great though, because you're just going to be fired up, you know? And and it's it's going to be good though, because these uh, planets are, well, I'll talk about that in a second, but the planets will be moving into earth signs. So this is like one last burst of fiery energy before that happens. So then the moon in Sagittarius, uh, also, wait, let's talk about that for a second more. Um, with Mercury and Aries, you can really get a lot of stuff done around your neighborhood. Uh, you know, talk to people in your neighborhood, talk to people on the phone, talk to your siblings, and really um, get fired up and share ideas and, um, you know, get things like, you know, worked out, get like, you know, allow these conversations to flow, these uh somewhat enlightening conversations, expansive conversations, and learn new things and really uh, share these ideas. It may bring up a little bit of uh, arguments at times, but they should be pretty lively, like could bring up a lively debate and things could uh, work out to where you expand someone else's mind or your own mind gets expanded in the process. Um, don't be too rigid in your own point of view. Allow others to have their own point of view because Aries does get pretty, uh, you know, like they like it their way. <laughs> um, but uh, with Sagittarius, Sagittarius is able to expand and to philosophize and kind of uh, look at a bigger picture. So that should be fun too. All right, then the moon in Sagittarius trines south node in Aries and sextiles the north node in Libra. So, 
So we're letting go of beliefs we have about ourselves, expanding beyond the beliefs we have about ourselves, uh, believe, uh, beliefs surrounding like what we believe ourselves to be, but which can help us to expand our sense of self, to help us be more ourself. With it sextiling the North Node in Libra, this helps us to uh, expand our beliefs about relationships too, and to help us to maybe expand our emotions to allow for a relationship if you're not in one already, and also allow for the relationship ex itself to expand and grow, and for both people to expand and grow and uh, become more uh, open and aware of your beliefs together. All right, and then the moon in Sagittarius trines the sun in Aries. And that's going to be in the very last degrees, 29 degrees of each one. So uh, one last little trine there, huh? <laughs> in the fire signs. All right, so anyway, moon in Sagittarius trining sun in Aries definitely is helping us to expand ourselves, expand our emotions, expand beyond what we have believed ourselves to be, expand who we are, expand our horizons, and ex uh, be able to help bring expansion to others by being expansive. And it may even help us to bring abundance to ourselves and to be, uh, just be more abundant, be more grateful, be more ourselves, just be, you know, who we are in a more expanded way. <laughs> And maybe even expand our horizons, be able to travel or uh, learn new things from others and uh, learn new things about ourselves. Yes. <laughs> and then the moon moves into Capricorn. And this brings um, how we feel about our ambitions to light. It helps us to feel more grounded, to feel more maybe reserved. We may feel more reserved and may want to conserve our energy a little more. After all that expansion, we may need to kind of, uh, you know, conserve a little bit more because we have been a little excessive with the Sag. But now we can kind of go uh, and kind of maybe focus in on uh, what we need to get done, focus on where we need to start uh, putting all that energy that we were just gaining from the Sag and the Aries and all the fiery energy and put that stuff down into, uh, you know, getting, getting things more grounded, working towards the goals that you have, working towards the careers that you want. And after gaining all that insight, you're able to really hone in on what you want uh, for your career and be able to feel better about where you're going, feel more ambitious and just more in line with what you were wanting to bring to the table. Then the sun enters Taurus and this is going to make us feel a lot more, uh, definitely more grounded, uh, more sensual, more earthy, more abundant. There's a lot to be grateful for. There's a lot to be, uh, enjoyed with these earthy energies. There's a lot to be enjoyed with, you know, regards to our things and, and, uh, gaining abundance and, um, being more patient as well. You're able to kind of move at a slower and steadier pace and be more receptive. And, uh, you may have stronger instincts at this time for gaining money and you'll, be maybe a bit more stubborn than usual or maybe a little more rigid. You may not want so much change to be going on. You may want to feel more stable. Um, and, you know, that's okay as long as you are able to be a little bit flexible, <laughs> you know, and allow for things to occur and um, allow yourself to receive to, yeah. And then Jupiter and Cancer squares Uranus and Aries. So expanding upon our emotions and allowing new insights to occur to, you know, occur within ourselves and learn new things about ourselves. And really it's about expanding what we have begun, expanding this uh, 
this emotional place that we have started to come into, this place where we have become more aware of our own emotions, where we can really uh, try to bring that to the world and allow for these insights to come in and allow for these things to change, these things within ourselves that need to change, the subconscious things that need to change, allow for us to expand beyond what our family has taught us, allow us to expand what a family is, expand maybe even, uh, you know, gaining a tribe of sorts, um, and maybe even expanding upon what other cultures do in terms of family and groups. Um, though I don't know, like, if I, yeah, like, yeah, groups, I guess, a little bit, you know, it depends on, you know, and usually smaller groups, I would say, on this case, like, more, like, uh, closer emotionally, close ties, family ties, even looking into your heritage, learning more about your heritage, and really expanding in that area. Uh, more insights could come to you about your heritage, and more insights could come to you about your ancestry. I've been hearing the word ancestry so much lately, it's crazy. But some like ancestral stuff could be coming into your world. Some things that you've learned, like about you know your ancestry, could really shake up your world, shake up your beliefs even. And um, I mean, you could really gain insights by looking into that stuff. And there could be some tensions that come up about it because there's maybe some beliefs that you've been holding on to that are um, you know being asked to really be let go of. But Ultimately, this is all for the expansion of yourself and expansion of, uh, you know, a greater expansion of who you are and also um, of the culture in which you would like to find yourself um, and the one that you resonate with. Yeah. <laughs> all right. April 20th, 2014, the moon in Capricorn, sextiles Neptune in Pisces. So, we are feeling more in tune with our purpose and with our ambitions and what we want to do with the world, uh, in the world, what we want to bring to the world, what we want to do as a career. Um, Neptune is helping our intuitions be very spot on, helping us to really uh, follow our hunches, follow our intuition, follow our feelings, be in tune with our feelings and following our feelings in order to create a career or uh, follow a career that we wish to pursue or follow our ambitions or the things we want to bring to the world, all those things. Then Venus conjuncts Chiron and Pisces. <laughs> now this is bringing up the wounds that are related to love, the wounds that are related to the relationships we are in or the wounds that um, are preventing us from gaining a relationship and we are really needing to heal that area, dissolve those things, allow healing to occur, let go of things that are holding us back from being in love and being in love with ourselves even. Even if it's self-love, just allow forgiving yourself, allowing yourself to love yourself and letting go of the things that you have projected onto love allowing things to dissolve away, to melt away, to get in tune with who you are, in tune with the universe, in tune with intuition, and really being in alignment with who you are and in alignment with love. And I almost want to end it there. <laughs> All right, but there is more. Uh, Jupiter and Cancer opposes Pluto and Capricorn, and I've definitely talked about these things. I mean, um, I talked about them before they were exact, and now I'm talking about again now that they are becoming ex exact. And I'm going to be talking about it more again, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> All right, um, but Jupiter and Cancer opposing Pluto and Capricorn. Oh my gosh, I just said the best thing last week about this, and I don't even want to like go beyond that, but we'll find out what I say here. All right, so Jupiter and Cancer, of course, is expanding us beyond uh, what we have planted as our foundation, expand ourselves, expand our emotional selves, expand our emotional states, and expand our uh, like home, expand our family, expand beyond what our family has brought us, expand beyond um, what we have inherited, expand beyond what um, what our ancestors maybe even brought us, like expanding in our beliefs about 
these things expanding and allowing ourselves to go to the deeper parts of our uh, roots our roots especially our roots could be anything really like um, uh, our, our history, our past, our foundation, um, expand beyond what we were given Ex and, 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 and let go, let go of the things that are, uh, not in alignment with you anymore. Allow, allow yourself to go beyond those places and allow yourself to, uh, expand beyond what has been comfortable for you too. Because the home is a comfortable place. It's a, it's a safe place. Um, so don't just be, you know, stuck in a, a stagnant, uh, comfort zone. Allow yourself to expand beyond your comfort zone. Opposing Pluto and Capricorn. <laughs> Pluto and Capricorn is having us, especially since it's retrograde, going within ourselves and allowing ourselves to bring forward what is within us and like go into ourselves and let 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 uh those transformations occur surrounding the um unconscious modes of being when it comes to our ambitions and our careers and what we want to bring to the world uh, really going within ourselves and finding those gems that we need to bring to the world going within ourselves and just grabbing those things and just being like I have this gift I wish to show this world. I need to bring this to the world. Like, allow yourself to be a, uh, like a beacon for change and transformation. Allow yourself to be on the, you know, just on the edge. Allow yourself to expose who you are to the world. Proclaim who you are to the world. And in doing so, you're letting go of the fears surrounding that, and you're transforming the world by doing that. But right now, it's retrograde, so you don't have to rush this. You know, you can keep on transforming yourself. You can keep on going within yourself. You can keep on dealing with what's going on within yourself and letting go of the fears surrounding these things. And as you do so, you're going to get clearer. You're going to get lighter. You're going to be able to bring forward those things when the time is right. Snap. <laughs> All right. Moon in Capricorn squares Uranus and Aries. All right. So let's think about that for a second. <laughs> All right. So, okay. More insights coming in and more insights coming in about what we need to do for the world, what we need to do as an ambition, and more insights about how we feel about those things. We're going to be uh, just clearing away the limits we put on ourselves, clearing away the limitations, uh, going into what, you know, has limited us and letting just these things be shaken up, especially subconscious things and subconscious motivations that we may have had and allowing for those things to be just shaken up and breaking up and uh you know shattered allowing the subconscious fears allowing the subconscious limitations to just be completely shattered and this is going to be kind of intense at first of course and you know ultimately it will give you the insights you need and at first, you may not want to know the insights that you are going to need. But this helps you to break free, to help you break through those limitations and be a force for change. Be a person who can, you know, follow their dreams and not be afraid to follow their dreams, to follow those ambitions, those careers, those you know, maybe even become an authority on change, become an authority of sorts, be a leader, to be a leader. Yeah. <laughs> and then the moon conjuncts Pluto and Capricorn and opposes Jupiter and Cancer. So m the moon conjuncting Pluto and Capricorn is bringing up more of that stuff. <laughs> All those subconscious feelings, subconscious uh, ideas about... Um, you know, what ambition is, what careers are, what, you know, what we're supposed to do in the world, 
bringing up all these subconscious things, subconscious limitations, things that have held us back from following what our true ambitions are. And yeah, we're transforming these things. We're just going to move forward. We're going to keep on expanding our emotional state, expanding upon our foundation, expanding upon, you know, what we wish to feel. Um... Yes. <laughs> All right. And then the moon in Capricorn squares Mars and Libra. So our emotions are going to be a bit more volatile on this day. And we are going to need to either rest more, reserve our energies, or we're going to need to expend some energies. And it just really depends on how you're feeling on that day. Um, we could move forward with some ideas that we have about our careers and ambitions at this time. We could also... Um, kind of focus our energies a bit on relationships as well. So it is really about finding a balance and finding, uh, you know, reserving our energies if we need to, or expending our energies if we need to. It's kind of uh, utilizing our energies properly, allowing ourselves to um, exercise or rest if we need to, so that our emotional state can be right on board with, you know, what we need to do. All right, and then the moon in Capricorn sextiles Chiron and Venus in Pisces. And this is bringing up some wounds related to our limitations, our subconscious limitations, and also our um, careers and our what we want to do as a career and um, allowing us to really uh, follow what we want to do, what we love to do, what we would love to do. And helping us to dissolve those unconscious things, those, sub, uh, those subconscious things, those subconscious wounds, dissolve those wounds that maybe um, you received at some point because you had a dream that you wanted to follow as a career. And then somebody might have, you know, said something discouraging that maybe caused a wound for you. So you're help it's helping you to dissolve those wounds around what you want to do as a career and really follow your dreams, follow your intuition, follow what your soul wants, what you want, what your true purpose is. All right. <laughs> this was a pretty long reading and I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you stuck with me here. Um, if you enjoyed it, I would love to hear about it. And, uh, you know, you can do that by commenting or liking or subscribing and even sharing. And I will talk to you guys very soon. Have an awesome weekend.